Now, for the eighth consecutive time in a row, the federal government has again extended a deadline for the registration of SIM and IN linkage mandate by the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy from October the 31st to the end of this year. This recent extension will make it a year since the registration process has been ongoing with well over 66 million unique national identity numbers issued. Within this period, there are over 9,500 enrollment systems and over 8,000 NIN enrollment centers within and outside the country. This has significantly eased the NIN enrollment process and subsequently linkage of NIN to SIM. While the process seems to be recorded in numbered successes, the policy does not necessarily seem to be having an effect leaving operators to bear the loss of more than 19 million subscribers in the last 11 months. Well, joining me now to discuss this and much more, I have the chairman of the Association of Licensed Telecommunications Operators of Nigeria, Benga Adebayo. Many thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me and good afternoon. Mr. Adebayo, let's start off with your assessment of the NIN SIM card process, SIM uh, registration process we've had so far. And then tally this with the practice we have abroad. Now we've seen extension, open extension, open extension. This is about the eighth consecutive time. There's this growing sentiment that with such registration processes, we don't necessarily have to put deadlines, but we have to cultivate that culture of continuous registration. Do you think we are gradually getting there or this is getting clearer by the day with these extensions? Yes, we are gradually getting there and things are getting better every day. Uh, please recall that before the federal government gave the ultimatum for 31st of December 2020, 2020 as the first deadline, we had very limited Nigerians who had gone to the NIM registration center to obtain their name. When their ultimatum was given, it was like a red alert to everyone that if you don't have the name numbers and link to your SIM card, you may lose connection. Uh, that was a wake-up call for many Nigerians, and rightly so, many people responded. And looking at the numbers today, I think we've done quite well. Even the uptake of enrollment prior to December 2020, and now what we have by November 2021, I think we have done very well. Um, this means that everybody in the digital ecosystem had come together to make this happen. Uh, the National Identity Management Commission had done their best, but in terms of footprint, area of capture and all that, there was limited number of enrollment centers. But today, the number of mobile operators are capturing uh, citizens. They are providing them with their name number, and rightly so, they are linking it with their SIM card. And I think the exercise is making very good progress. In terms of um, extension and extension, um, government is responding to the statistics that we are providing. Uh, you know, also because of COVID, there is limited number of there was limited number of people who could visit certain number of enrollment center at a particular time. Uh, and so, given the limitation in access, given the limitation that we had in terms of enrollment center, now with the widespread footprint put that we are having, and more operators are, are, are activating um, most enrollment centers, then the numbers are getting better. We are hoping that by the time we come to the first of December, 2021, uh, things will be a lot better. And at that time, based on statistics, government will be able to take the right decision on how to proceed. On whether this is something that should be done once and or done in continuity the answer is yes we should do it uh, on continuous basis because so long as you have birth and death you need to continue to register people you also have diasporas who are returning home who need to be captured the people who are getting into the enrollment age you need to be captured so that has to happen but before now we haven't had reliable national database and what government has said is that the national identity management commission is the only agency of government that is empowered to manage citizens data and rightly so they had insisted that everyone must can uh, obtain an nin number with a view to be captured on the national database and so the objective of this exercise is actually to ensure that we have a credible and reliable national database that's the direction that we are headed and therefore what it means at some point i uh, will not have to do everybody again and again because once we are captured we are captured only those who have never been captured will have to be captured uh, going forward in, in the future so it will come to a point where you don't have to do it again once you have it 
uh, which is now actually. But you don't have it, you still need to do it. So continuity, yes, people need to come to be enrolled once they are not enrolled. But once they are enrolled, they are enrolled for once and they are enrolled forever. And those enrollment, those name number will be linked to their SIM card and they're, they're just good to go. So I think we are making good, good progress. We seem to have started late, but given the progress that has been made in the last um, 10 months there about, I think the direction is good. We're heading in the right direction and things are certainly looking better. Hmm. Now, Mr. Adebayo, let's also look at the registration process in its entirety in terms of crowd management. Now, at the end of the day, we're looking at about 66 million uh, unique NIN numbers issues. This is just about a quarter of Nigeria's population if you're going to play by numbers. But at the end of the day, we have a major challenge when it comes to the seamless registration process or user experience network challenges. You understand what I'm saying here? How do you see things taking a different narrative as we've taken cues from the process this year and then replicating or having better standards come next year? Well, my, my interest, our interest as an association is not in number of people captured on the NIM data, but it's about the number of people whose NIM numbers are linked to their SIM cards. And that's the interest, interest here so I'm focusing on, Mr. Yeah. Adebayo, is looking at the sim, how seamless, improving on the seamless operation. That's the focus we are looking at here. Yeah, I, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. And therefore, whatever number is reported today has said to be number of cities that have been captured. Uh, it's an average of uh, three to four SIM card per person. So if you look at the number of arguments, take like about 70 million, or by the time you do that in a multiple of two or three, we're already, we already crossing 200 million mark. And for us, uh, that, that's, that's something that is quite impressive in terms of number of subscribers that we do have on our national network. In terms of the seamless uh, ap approach, our seamless registration at the, at the enrollment centers, things are getting better. The reason being that before uh, the involvement of mobile network operators, it's only the National Identity Management Commission that had pocket of centers across the country. But now it's happening that you can go to a number of the customer experience centers of mobile operators and be registered. And so access becomes easier, availability becomes easier. And so uh, it's easier for a lot of people to do so now than it was in the beginning. So certainly things are looking better. About network availability, um, on a number of locations where we have the enrollment centers today, availability is guaranteed uh, because we do have connection from there to the back end of the operators and also that of the identity management commission. So on a larger scale, I think we are in a better place than we were in the early part of the year. And as mm. more enrollment centers are activated, the more it will be easier for the people, the more it will be better for the people. And as I said, at, at a point, you will not have so many people needing to enroll again. So naturally, the crowd will go down. So while we build up enrollment centers now, at some point, numbers of enrollees will go down because there will not be new, many new people having to enroll. And it just become working and register and, and, and leave. Uh, that's what will happen in a couple of months from now. Hmm. And then looking at what would also see playing out in a couple of months from now, we also have to look at the agenda, why we even have this NIN SIM registration process in the first place. Some of the issues at hand, especially as we're looking at uh, economic agenda for the populace and having improved economic uh, standpoint for the average Nigeria, we also have to look at the proceeds we expect from this now in terms of checkmating corruption and also being able to track and have improved data management and integration. Do you think at the end of the day with all of these registrations, these SIM and an NI registration process will help us achieve that? We've had instances like the BVN and then we've also had instances where the NI is also coming through and then it's almost like a tweak from the previous agenda set. Do you think we're going to have this as the unified uh, element here to ensure that we have an integration of services and seamless operations? Yes, we will. Um, reason being that the National Identity Management Commission is the only agency of government that is charged with national identity management. Uh, there are those who are meant to re register citizens and to manage their identity, so to say. Uh, the other agencies that you mentioned, or the other platform that you mentioned, they are industry-specific, and they have no bearing in the national identity scheme. Because, for example, the BVN, you don't have every citizen having bank accounts, for example. So the BM or BVN was just appropriate for those who hold bank accounts. Uh, for the other driver's license, for example, data capture for driver's license, you don't have everybody holding driver's licenses. The government is saying here that you need to have a national identity number 
to be a registered citizen and against that you need to be able to present that to any government agency where you require public service whether to obtain a passport to obtain a license to open a bank account and all of that because this is the only agency of government that is charged with citizens data management and that is the action that the government is taking us so it will come to a point where once this data is established we will have a reliable and credible national database provide statistics for government, it makes planning easier, it makes uh, uh, population control and population management easier, and it just makes a lot of things easier for both citizens and for government. And it also makes people identifiable. Our government is saying now that come and link your NIM with your SIM card so that we can know who you are and where you are. So in terms of security and access and availability and traceability, it makes it easier for everyone. So I think that the more we all embrace this issue of NIM and sin integration, the better for all of us. We cannot, as a people, a country of our size, a country a population of our kind of size, the kind of landmass that we have, we cannot not have national and credible and reliable national database. And this is what mm. government is saying. And rightly so, we are working with government to ensure that along with the National Identity Management Commission in one digital ecosystem, we as network operator provide the right interface for government and for citizens to have them enrolled, to have them registered, and have them identifiable on our national network, and as well as in having access to other public services of government. Mm. I like the fact that you touched on the one uh, national uh, digital ecosystem we're trying to also build. Let's also look at some of the losses incurred by some telecom operators in the country due to this process because there was the uh, stop of uh, some sale of SIM cards and a whole lot more just to bring sanity to the market. Are you optimistic that uh, the losses bared by these operators will be recovered? On the long run, yes. The re reason being that when we talk about um, national security, uh, economic consideration becomes secondary. So we are not counting how much is lost to uh, non-sale of SIM card or the, the activation of SIM, SIM card or inability to replace SIM card because of uh, SIM link. We are only talking about national interest. And when we talk about national interest as responsible uh, corporate citizens, we provide support for government, we provide input to government as may be required. And once government gives that directive that we must link and integrate NIN with SIM cards, we complied immediately, uh, taking into uh, consideration the national security interest without regard to whatsoever or whatsoever to whatever economic losses that may be. So for us, for the greater good, we are saying yes, it's worthwhile. This, the price a sacrifice that has been made by operator is worthwhile because it's for the greater good of all, not just for us as a network operator, but for us as a country and as citizens of Nigeria. Hmm. And then do you also see a further extension of this date? We are looking at the end of this year. We are gradually inching to the 100 million mark. This is a commendable mark, getting halfway through at least. That also helps to invigorate the populace and trust in this process. Do you think we might likely see a further extension going into 2022? Oh, I wouldn't know. I'm just a network <laughs> operator. That's, the, that's left to government to decide. But uh, my, my, my charge to the public is that for those who have not enrolled, Please visit the nearest enrollment center and enroll. Get your get your enrollment done, get your capture done, and uh, register that with your network operator so that you can continue to enjoy service. December is still uh, quite some some days away. It's a still few a days lot of away. Work that can be done between now and then. So I think that um, at the right time, we provide the right input for government based on data and statistics. Government will take the right advice at that time. Our assurance is that we're working with government in the best interest of the public and of citizens that we serve in the benefit of our subscribers. And we hope that we all of us pulling together this issue of one national credible, reliable uh, national identity database will be something that we will all have and we'll be proud that as a citizen, as a country, we are known as citizens, we are registered, we are identifiable, whatever we are, whatever we do. So for the greater good, we are we are to everyone to try and be captured, be registered and link your name with your say for the greater good. When we come to the end of December, the time, the deadline, when the deadline comes, so we we'll provide the next information for government and we know that government will take the right decision at that time. Mm. Now, Mr. Adebayo, we are gradually wrapping up our conversation. Let's now look at the broader space of telecommunication operation in Nigeria, bringing into focus the 5G uh, network te technology. How do you see things taking shape? We've had quite an interesting transition from 2 to 3 to 4G, and now the prospect of 5G. This has come with a whole lot of conflict in terms of the narrative, but how do you see things taking shape as you're looking at increased penetration and the implementation of this uh, 
uh, seamless internet network base? Thank you. Uh, 5G is about data. It's about data availability, high speed of data, availability of data, um, easy access, man machine interface, machine to machine. Um, this is the language of the world today. Um, experience from COVID lockdown has shown that telecommunications and data in particular has become very critical to us, just as roads become important to us as a means of access, so that other means of transmission become very important and critical. Telecom has become one of those critical services that we now require as a people, both to function socially and economically. And 5G will take us to the next level in terms of speed of the high speed of data, in terms of low latency, in terms of availability, and ultimately, we hope, in terms of the cost of end user services. Um, the narration about 5G uh, being a different technology or harmful technology to man. It has no basis in science. Um, there has been some uh, poorly informed uh, people talking about 5G and, and COVID-19. There's no relationship whatsoever and as ever between COVID-19 and 5G. Countries in the world that do not have 5G, they have high impact of COVID-19. I mean, some countries that do have 5G even before now, they didn't have so much impact of COVID-19. So it hasn't to do with, with it at all. Uh, 5G is, is, is a means of telecom transmission, which is works by microwave, I mean, by electromagnetic transmission. Doesn't have anything to do with uh, movement of viruses and, and, and the rest of them. Um, and this is the successor technology for 4G. Before now, we've had 4G, 3G, 2G. And as we have successive technologies, we have better improvement in terms of communication, in terms of access, and in terms of availability. And 5G will also offer, offer that. Uh, so looking at technology of today and the future, uh, 5G is the way to go. We are pleased that government has now released a policy in that regard, and we are now following that. And we hope that by the time we'll have commercial launch of uh, 5G in the next uh, couple of months, um, the country will be better for it. So uh, we ask that people should please be patient. They should be assured that it's quite safe. It's very safe technology to bring better user experience, to bring better data communication, to bring better access to uh, electronic services, e-commerce, uh, e-health, e-education. E e and all of those applications that run on the digital flower will be easily accessible using the 5G. Um, network coverage will be better, latency will be better, and we hope the end user prices will also be better with the introduction of 5G. So we are we are we are good to go. So we say uh, yesterday was 4G, uh, tomorrow and today it is 5G. So welcome to a new dawn uh, on 5G technology. Mm. I'm getting some catchphrases from you. Welcome to a new dawn. Now, lastly, we are we're almost done here now in terms of the Internet of Things. Now in Nigeria, we are seeing a gradual transition as well. You see smarter homes, you see smarter offices as well. How do you see telecom operators in Nigeria taking this opportunity, this area of a variety to now key in and also drive this agenda where we see the Internet of Things work in Nigeria? How do you see things playing out? We will be the infrastructure on infrastructures. Uh, in essence, a lot more applications will run on communication network. And that goes to speak to a larger fact that telecom will be the most critical national infrastructure that we have. Because today, uh, we talk about, uh, talk about even electricity metering. Uh, your home meters, the modern meters do have SIM cards in them. Uh, loading and uh, unloading and all of that of, of electricity uh, electricity charges are being done even using telecom uh, platforms. Uh, look at the financial sector. Today, you can leave home without your wallet, but you hardly could leave home without your telephone, uh, without your mobile phone, because on your phone, you can do your banking, on your phone, you can buy transport, on your phone, you can buy commerce, and you can do all and everything using the telephone. So the communications, telecom will be that infrastructure that is most critical to many other sectors of the national economy, and we are very aware about this. And so we are saying that having covered the country, having done the most that we have done, having been the most that needs to be done in terms of new technologies and all that, we all must now take ownership of communication infrastructures and refer to them, regard them as the most critical national infrastructure that we do have. When you have one station near you, protect them. Protect this from willful and unwillful damage because when those infrastructure go out of service, it will have an impact on your life, not just at home, 
but also on even the things that you do. So mm. this will be the most critical infrastructure that we have, and we all must take ownership of the communication infrastructure as a public infrastructure for common good. Because tomorrow, all of the things that we do, uh, majority, if not all, I must say, will be dependent on communication services. And as an industry, we are fully prepared for that. And that's why you can see that we talk at, at all times about critical infrastructure, about the role that we play. Uh, and we must be appreciative of what government is doing in terms of giving us ability to deliver services across the length and breadth of the country. And also to thank the citizens of the country who use telecom services because without the customers, we will not be here. So we are good, um, we are grateful, and we are happy, and we are quite excited that the future of the country actually depends on communication services and an industry that we are, we say we are proud in saying that we are about the most reliable and the most available uh, social services to citizens of the country. And then the year 2020 saw the telecommunication sector show how robust and resilient it is. We saw, we saw quite a, an interesting transition in terms of how so many homes and businesses had to go online and heavily rely on the telecommunication sector. It's going to be quite an interesting year 2022. We'll keep our fingers crossed and see how things will play out, whether or not we're going to have a cu another curveball, another uh, variant of the COVID-19 or whatever shock. We just hope that the telecommunication sector is prepped up. Yeah, even the media. Better. The media has also enjoyed the benefits of good telecommunication <laughs> services. Indeed. The part yes. I will be at your studio to have this live interview. Indeed. But today I'm several Indeed. miles away from you. And here we are just next to each other. Thank you for Indeed. having me. Thank you very much, Mr. Agbinga Adebayo. That's just a beautiful way to leave the conversation. We've been speaking with the chairman of the Association of Licensed Telecommunications Operators of Nigeria.